Welcome back, my name is Jamie Hartley from Crossfader and today's video we are going to focus on Record Box again. We did a tips and tricks video for specifically users of export mode recently, but now we're going to focus on the performance mode. So those DJs that use controllers like this, the DDJ RB right up to the RZX, or maybe you use DVS mode with Record Box with CDJs and potentially an SP1 as an add-on. These tips and tricks will help speed up workflow, help you organize your music better within performance mode, and some interesting things within the settings of Record Box that can help us when it comes to our DJ sets. The first half of these tips and tricks are focused around the keyboard shortcuts, both setting up your own and some that are currently set, some of my favorites, and some of the things that I would recommend to DJs to help their workflow. The second half is way more about the settings and some of the things we can do specifically within record box performance mode to help aid us maybe with more of the intro controllers like the rb or for times when we don't have specific buttons on the controller if we're using dvs mode remember if you've got any questions or any comments please post them below and i do my best to get back to every single person and i hope you enjoy the video remember to subscribe to help us keep doing what we're doing Welcome to Record Box Performance Mode. Let's get stuck in. The first thing I want to do is change something in the settings. This is to do with the keyboard shortcuts underneath the preferences. If you click the gear icon and then travel across to the keyboard tab. At the moment it's on none as the keyboard shortcuts preferences, but there's two performance modes. There's performance one and performance two. Now personally, I like a lot of the different shortcuts within both of these performance modes. So I'm gonna try and combine some of them, make them relevant to potentially some of the other softwares out there like Serato and Traktor. Um, let's choose performance mode one. And first of all, I'll show you some of the basic ones and then we're gonna set up some ourselves. First that I like, whether you're in your collection or any particular playlist, we can press Command and F at any time and our cursor will jump to the search box here. Command and F, type the name of an artist. I'm gonna type my friend Owen Jones. Um, for the purpose of this video and then without touching the mouse or anything we can press tab to locate down onto our library press the up and down arrow keys to find the track we want and then a really simple one that i like is to load the tracks using shift and the left or shift and right we can load this track onto both sides and as you can see nice and quick all done with the keyboard the next keyboard shortcut i like is just shift and tab which toggles between the playlist and collection back to within that collection or playlist this means you can start doing stuff really quickly with your cursors and the keyboard shortcuts. If you're in a playlist and want to find a specific track in there, Command and F, we don't need to touch the mouse at all, and then type a track's name. That's just a quick recap. Command and F will highlight what we've just typed and we can type something else again. Command and F, backspace to delete, tab to go down, shift and tab to go back, up arrows, back to the collection. And you can repeat this process. The next really useful tip is this numerical row on the top of our keyboard, one to zero. If you imagine splitting this in half, so one to five and six to zero, we can use one to five for the left hand deck and six to zero for the right. At the moment in the performance modes of the keyboard shortcuts, one to five will set hot cues. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see it sets up the hot cues. If we press the hot cue again, it will activate the track and play from that hot cue. Now I've set the hot cue in the same place on all five, but you can obviously set them in different places in the track. Let's just stop that track there. I'm going to delete those hot cues, clicking the X button. Also in Record Box, we don't just have hot cue mode, but we also have pad effects, slicer, and beat jump, amongst a few more. The beat jump in particular, we can activate different pages, showing up different values. Okay, so no matter what pad mode we're on in Record Box, the first five numbers on the left hand side, one to five, will work with that current pad mode. So let's play this track and just have a listen if I press one. It does the first five pad mode effects. Go to Slicer. And again, the exact same thing. Go to Beat Jump and this will beat jump through the track. 16 beats forward and backwards, or eight bars forward and backwards. You can change what shows up here if you're on something say like half beat and one beat, use the page button here to navigate the largest values you can. This is really good for setting up your hot cues and any other particular points in the track. 
Now that's all good and well, but this means we're using our mouse to navigate between the different pad modes. So let's set up some shortcuts ourselves in the settings. I want to be able to jump to the different pad modes by just holding shift and then pressing one, two, three, four to jump to the different pad modes that we have available. To do this, click the gear icon, make sure you're on keyboard preferences, open up deck one and navigate down to where it says pad mode hot Q. Click the plus icon, then press a key combination. We want shift and one, press OK. It might come up with a box saying it's currently assigned to one of the hot cues, but just press reassign. Don't worry about it. The hot cues still work with one to five. Go on to beat jump and that was number four. So we want to press shift and four. Okay. Reassign. Um, pad effects, shift and two. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Slicer, shift and three. Okay, now let's double check that. If we press shift two, it goes to pad effects, shift three, slicer, shift four to the beat jump. We could then use numbers three and four to beat jump through the track, jump back to one, set up a hot cue, and there we go. This makes our preparation way more tactile, and even when we want to perform, we can use the keyboard shortcuts to do that if we don't have all of the performance mode, especially if you're using DVS mode with CDJs, for example. You would then want to repeat this process for deck two also and do the exact same thing, but press shift and six, seven, eight, nine for the other side. I'm going to quickly do that now. Once that's done, we're gonna scroll down. Another thing that's really useful to be able to do is set up auto beat loops using just the keyboard. If we navigate down, we're gonna do deck two first. I've already set up command and zero on 16 beats. We can then press shift and seven. This one I'm gonna remove and add in command and nine for the eight beats, press okay. Command and eight for four beats. Get rid of shift and five. Command and where are we, seven. And command and six for one beat. Repeat that exact same process within deck one also. Let's check out some of those shortcuts in action. If we press play on the right hand side and then press command and seven, we get a two beat loop. Press command and seven again, it undoes the loop. Let's now press eight while it's playing, it sets a hot cue. If we press shift and seven, we should be able to jump to pad effects and then use any of the top numbers by themselves, six to zero, to activate the different pad effects. Shift and zero, sorry, shift and nine to jump to the beat jump, and then jump left and right throughout the track. Remember, you can show up different values by using the pages. Shift and six to go back to hot cues. Of hot cues. It takes a bit of practice just to get used to the different shortcuts, but it's very tactile. You can access things very quickly just using your keyboard. This is especially useful when you move on to using CDJs in clubs and don't have the controller with all the performance pads there. Another really quick tip that I like is to set up the option to zoom in and out using command plus and minus. This is a common shortcut in other DJ softwares, but isn't always set up in record box. Click the gear icon navigate down to all decks and then zoom in and out, literally just press the plus and press command and plus. Okay. And zoom out, command and minus. Okay. Let's check that works. You can now see the waveforms. We can zoom in and out to see and reveal more of the waveforms. This works in both views, whether you're using vertical or horizontal. Let's go back to horizontal. Another shortcut I like is being able to set up quantize on the keyboard. Some controllers like the DDJ-RB don't actually have a quantize button on there and I like to toggle it on and off depending on whether I'm using hot cues or the loop mode. To set up the quantize shortcut, just go to the gear icon, then go to each individual deck. You may find that quantize is already set up. I like to have Q set up for the left hand deck and then shift and Q for the right hand deck. Let's quickly set that one up here, shift Q. Okay, 
You'll notice now when I press Q, this red quantize here turns on and off. Shift and Q and the same on the right hand side. Perfect. It's always worth checking your shortcuts work in between setting them up. Another quick shortcut is being able to press the space bar to view the browser and that's common in other DJ softwares but at the moment it's set up to just play and pause the left hand deck. Click the gear icon, navigate down to view and then toggle the layout, decks and browse screen, click plus, press space and click OK. Reassign, let's check that works. Much better, we now get a wider view of the library when selecting tracks. Press space bar and we get the players back up again. Now the next tip is another shortcut for when you're playing in clubs or parties and you're looking for your library and you think actually I want to play this track but not next, I want to play this track but not next, just sometime in the near future. You can then do what you call tag tracks and your tag list is located here. If you press this drop down you can see the tag list view there. There are no tracks in there, you can drag and drop but we want to set up a nice convenient shortcut for that. To set that up, go to the gear icon and browse, and then there should be one called move, sorry, add column to tag list. Press the plus, I'm gonna set it up as command and T. Press okay, and let's check that works. There you can see, we can be scrolling through thinking, I wanna play that, but not next. I wanna play this, but not next. And now we've got a temporary playlist that can be combined from different, different playlists we've already got saved, and our entire collection. When you play a track, obviously it turns green, so we can indicate that we have already played that track. If you want to get rid of the tracks in the tag list, just command an A to select all, right click and remove from tag list. Okay, and there we go, we're back to normal again. Use this to toggle the tag list up and down. Okay, we're now finished with the keyboard shortcuts. Remember, you can assign anything in this program to any keyboard shortcut that you choose. You've just got to dive in there and find where that feature is, but those were some of my favorites. The next, which I quite like, is the ability with hot cues to not just have them as active hot cues, like they are at the moment, so that when you press it, even when the track is paused, it jumps to that point and plays. We can turn it into a static cue point, just like this one. To do that, just go into settings, Use the gear icon, go to controller and the deck and down, if you scroll down, this hot cue mode here, during pause, gate playback is applied. What this does now, if we check it, is it turns the hot cues into normal cue buttons. If we hold it, the track plays, but when we let go, it stops and goes back to that point. Now if we wanted the track to play, we'd hold the hot cue and then press play. The hot cue still works, like a normal hot cue when the track is currently playing. But when the track's paused, we can use it to finger drum. We've got up to eight different hot cues on the record box controllers. So there are loads of options to use this mode to hot cue drum, tone play, and just be really creative with different points in the track. Another really neat trick, especially for those who have the DDJ RB or RR, is we can actually change the color effects, which at the moment it's a filter and that's what it is as standard. But there are loads of other sound color effects that we can apply. If you've got a higher end controller, there will be buttons for these on the actual mixer section, but on these intro controllers, there aren't. To access them though, if you go into record box, click the CFX tab at the top, these are now our sound color effects. Literally on this, there's a three option or the number one. Just click the filter on, click edit, and then there's a drop down box. We can activate any of these and turn our filter into a jet, the crush, the noise, or anything else. Let's do dub echo, for example. Click off edit, press play. Now have a listen. Now, because we've only got one filter pot, we, or sound color effect pot, we can only have any one of these at any one time. You could have, if you go on to the three, we could have a different one on channel two and channel three, but that doesn't really make sense. I'd say keep the same one on both tracks. I'm gonna ne knock that back to filter for now because I think the filter is probably the most popular, the most common, but just know that that's there and you could do some interesting things with the other effects. Make sure to keep this active and turn it on, otherwise the filters won't work. 
The next really simple trick is that the tempo adjust at the moment only goes what you call plus and minus 10%. Now we can change the tempo range within the software, especially for these intro DJ controllers. We can actually access all sorts of different BPMs, not just 10% faster and 10% slower. To do this, we just simply click on this button here and it toggles between plus and minus 6%, 10%, 16% and wide. When it's on wide, for example, you can access nearly any BPM. Let's do that on the opposite side and show you on the controller as well. We're right up to 250%, which is 100% faster, twice the speed and right down to zero BPM. So you can access nearly any BPM, even on the smallest of controllers. Just please bear in mind that it is very, very, very fine to adjust. You can't do it by just one decimal place. So it jumps about eight decimal places at a time, but it's still a neat little trick to be able to access loads of different BPMs. Let's put them back to plus or minus 10. Something else you may find is you've got a track playing, you're looking for your library ready to load the next track and you accidentally load it onto the track that's currently playing. Now you may already have this setting on, but if not within the gear icon, you can avoid this happening literally in the deck tab underneath controller, eject slash load lock. If you lock this, it means it won't let you load another track whenever the track's playing. So if I try and load a track now, it physically won't let me. You see the warning box pop up at the bottom. Now if I pause the track, it will let me load. That's a nice way to avoid any mishaps happening while you're playing live in a club or, or at a party. Something that happens sometimes with record boxes, it doesn't analyze the tracks correctly. I, the BPM readout is wrong and this grid, the red, white, 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 red, white, white markers, which are the beats and bars, aren't laid over the beat correctly. It's kind of tucked away in performance mode and to access the beat grid options, all we need to do is click on where the number is of the player. There's a little drop down box and our grid options are within there. I'm not gonna go over what all the grid options do. If you're unsure about how to edit the grid, then um, maybe check out our record box beginner DJ course on our website, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you have little play around with it. Another thing in this option is the memory queue, and we touched on this in the record box tips and tricks for export mode. But just to recap, let's say for example, we wanted the track to automatically loop at this part as it drops in. We activate a loop there, and we can then save that loop in the memory. Let's click memory. And if we click set active loop where the orange loop marker is, it turns red. This means that when I undo this loop and go to, sorry, when I undo this loop and scroll back in the track, when it gets there, it automatically activates. This is great for short routines and for making the software do something without you actually having to activate it. Another thing to note when analyzing tracks is in the gear icon, if you go to analysis, I would highly recommend using the analysis mode on normal. What the difference is between normal and dynamic is dynamic will analyze any BPM changes in the track. So if you have a transition edit that moves from a certain BPM to another, it will analyze that change in BPM. But if you're just analyzing normal tracks that are a constant BPM throughout, dynamic almost over analyzes it. And if you find that a track keeps jumping up and down in its BPM value, like 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.0 to 0.1 to 0.2, that's probably because it's overanalyzed using dynamic. So any normal tracks use normal mode. Now let's look at some options for preparing your music and sort of managing your library. In the playlist there's a really neat feature called intelligent playlist. If you right click on the playlist, create new intelligent playlist, this allows you to set rules for that playlist and Recordbox will automatically add tracks that sit within those rules. For this, I'm gonna do an example of say everything from 130 BPM to 140 BPM. So I'm just gonna call it 130 to 140 BPM. We can then choose with the drop down boxes, BPM is in the range of 130 to 140. I'm actually gonna take this a step further by clicking the plus and adding another rule. I'm gonna choose everything that's been added to my library in the last 90 days. So these are my most recent downloads between this BPM. Click OK and it actually move, looks through my whole library and picks all the stuff between those BPMs and automatically places them in this playlist. If I was to just edit that a second by right clicking edit intelligent playlist and maybe did it in the last 12 months, you'll see it suddenly changes how many tracks are in there. 
So you can set these rules to however you would like to set up your library. A quick tip, if you have a look, I've got a folder here called Last 90 Days. If I open it, I've started working through uh, in the BPM order, so 10 BPM, 70 to 80, 81 to 90, and then I'm going to do 91 to 100, 101, and so on and so forth. This is a good way of having all your latest tracks organized automatically in different BPM brackets, um, and they're all your newest tracks to work with. To get them in a folder, simply just right click on playlists and create a new folder and drag them in there. Another quick tip is we can change any of the headers in our library just by clicking on them to do them in ascending or descending order. And if we right click, we can then choose any of these other options. I quite like DJ play count, so I've added that there. I'll just show you what that does. If I just scroll to the right slightly, DJ play count, it actually shows me how many times I've played each individual track. If I just click this, and do it by descending and then go to the top of my library. You can then find some of your most popular tracks that you've played regularly. So if you're ever sort of struggling for a track to play next to get the crowd going, these are probably the most likely ones that you've played in other sets. This is just a really simple trick, but works quite well for myself. Last but not least, there are a few little options if we just get, go out of full screen mode and go into file. You can display all missing files here. You may have come across that some of your tracks show up orange and you can't load them because you've either moved or deleted them from your hard drive or laptop or computer. If we display all missing files, we can just clean up our library. It just takes a second to scan your collection and then it shows up and you can choose to either relocate those specific files and choose the folder or just delete them because they're not in your library anymore. Click OK when you're done and it'll just clean up your library. The other one is if you click file and import and then scroll across, you can download the sampler plus pack and then import the sampler plus pack into your library. I think this option is available to everyone. I did this quite a while ago when I got record box and here's the sample pack here. Hopefully this works for everyone else and there's quite a few interesting little drum hits and risers and effects and all sorts that you can have a play with within the sampler and also even just load into the tracks to just maybe practice some scratching and stuff with. I hope all of these tips and tricks have really helped and remember for the keyboard shortcuts you can set up as many as you please and for all these extra tips and tricks just figure out what works for you. Not all of them will be for everyone but some of them are quite interesting and they're quite tucked away within the record box software. Firstly if you've made it this far in the video then thank you so much for watching. We've had loads of tips and tricks here. Remember to comment below if you've enjoyed it and subscribe for plenty more videos like this.